Welcome to CAS 133 Columbia Gorge Community College, the Dallas, Oregon Mrs. Hewitt Instructor. This is part of our week four lesson, but we're going to actually be discussing multitasking. Now, I know a lot of you are pros at multitasking. The TV's going, you're working on a paper, you're checking your phone, you're talking to a kid. I mean, you might have six, seven, eight things going, and hopefully you're not cooking and burning dinner at the same time. It's a little different when we're talking about computers and multitasking. I have a little short video I found on YouTube. Unfortunately, all they do is play music and they don't tell you what's going on. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit during it. We're not going to listen to their sound, at least I hope not, unless it comes on by accident. So let's go ahead and watch this video. I should have it on mute. There we go. <clears throat> Now, they're showing you that they have a lot of things open here along the bottom, way over crazy. And now they're opening and opening, and they've got different tabs open, opening, opening, opening. And these are all running. They're running at the same time. They're not something they're opening and closing. Notice there's no closing happening. They're just bouncing between various things they have open. Now, most people won't go quite this crazy and have this many things open. But a lot of times our computer's doing some of these behind the scenes. Like I saw the clock one go by. That's running all the time behind the scene and you don't even know what's going. But look at all those kind of windows layered in there. And so when you ask about why is RAM important, well, RAM is important because it's allowing your computer to do all those things. That's a Windows arrow thing that you can do to shift between programs. It's really cool. It's in Windows 7. I have to be honest, I've never tried it in Windows 8. I'm not positive if it's there or not. But let's talk a little bit about different types of windows. I have some windows open. I have a calculator open. I have the paint program open. I have WordPad open. I guess I should say I've got the images open too. I've made two different Word documents, Word document 1 and Word document 2. When I click on it, it shows me which document, so I can switch between documents if I have two documents open. Now, this could be handy for a couple reasons. If you don't know, you can grab documents at the top and slide them around. So I, And then you can get to the side and get that arrow so you can size them. So it's possible for me to create two documents literally sitting on my screen side by side. Now, there are some other ways to do it. But that's a good beginner's way to take care of that. So you can get those side by side. So if you're working on document one and typing here, but you need to be looking at document two while you're working, so you can type here, that's really handy. It's a great way to do it. Now, this doesn't have to be a Word document. It could be an image. It could be a PDF. It could be all sorts of different types of documents you might need to be uh, looking at in that second version. Now, there's some people that actually run two monitors. They can run them on two separate screens. That's really cool. If you're set up that way, go for it. But the average user is not set up to do that. So this is kind of the next best thing. You can have an Excel document there, a PowerPoint document. The only thing is you can't put the PowerPoint into presentation view in a split screen like this because if you do what ends up happening is it ends up running in a situation where um, it takes over the whole screen. Now under view there are ways that you can use Microsoft to open new windows, arrange windows, split windows, lay things side by side and then when you do things like that you can do it but then you have to make sure if you don't want it to, to scroll. I'm just rolling my mouse and notice how they both move together. If you want this one to stay still and this one to roll, then you have to worry about trying to figure out how to get. There's a place that says uh, recent windows position. Sync or scrolling. You want to turn that off. And then basically you can scroll on one document and the other one stays still, and then you can scroll on the other document. So those are kind of cool features and can be extremely handy when you're working on a couple of different things at the same time. Now I'm going to thin this down a little bit so I don't have quite so much running. You can do, again, use a small box up here that sizes it. So now I can have both paint and WordPad opened if I wanted to. Now I may want to change its shape a little bit. 
so I can reshape that box. It doesn't like being slid. I can reshape this box because some of that extra isn't even being used in that, and I can get those up here side by side. But I can also switch, if they were over the top of each other, I can also switch programs by using where they are down here. So now I can put paint on top, or I can put word pad on top. I can put the calculator over the top of them and put paint back on top, word pad, calculator. So you can switch that way as well. So that's a really nice thing to be able to do. You can also go, this is Alt and Tab, and it brings it up here so you can switch programs up here as well. Not one I use very often, but it will do it, or it will show you what's running. I, in this view, once I turn on the webcam, the document cam to like record this, I no longer have the capability of that Windows arrow thing where you can use your Windows key and your tab and rotate programs. It just sort of disables that. But that's another thing that exists. And if you want to know more about it, just hop out to YouTube and kind of Google it. You can usually find all sorts of answers by hopping over to YouTube and asking for them. Now, how does that play out when you're using Windows or you're using an internet browser? In Windows. So I can open extra tabs if you've never known that trick. Now's a good time to learn it. I can open tabs. Newly open things down here will show up. So I can click on it. Let's say and I want to bring, bring up another Moodle box. This is how instructors get in, not how students do. So this is my login page, which looks, I'm sure, very different than yours. I can get here. I can close tabs. One thing you may want to know that's really helpful, let's say you're wanting to look at this page, but you're also wanting to watch a video. So this should be in student view, and it's not. Hang on a half a second. I'm sure that looked really weird to you. Okay, so now we're back here, and hopefully we're getting back into a view that looks a little more reasonable. So let's say I wanted to turn on a video to watch for whichever unit I'm doing. And some of the videos are blurry a little bit because I cannot get the documents camera autofocus to actually autofocus. Not terribly helpful. Okay, here we go. Where's week four? There's week four. So let's say I wanted to turn on the learning project for word number two, research chapter, and the application project. So let's say I wanted to run a video right here. So I'm going to turn the video on, and I'm going to mute my machine before I do that because I don't want to really hear the video, but you would not want to do that. So I want to turn the video on, and I want to watch the video, but because it's a little bit blurry, I need to pull it up here so I can kind of follow along. If you grab this and you pull it off, that actually opens it in a standalone window. Now I can size my window smaller, so I just put my video up. And then I can have my screen open here. Oops, this is not in student view either. That's going to be another one you're going, boy, is that weird looking. I was editing just before I started this video. Okay, so, and we get back down here to week four. And I want to follow along in the video, but I don't need it this big. I can see it quite easily here. And that white, I can actually stick off the screen. It isn't going to matter any. I can nudge that over a little bit. Do a little cleaning up here, and then I can watch my video. And at the same time, I can scroll along over here and kind of see, oh, that's what it's talking about, or that's what it's talking about. And I can have my book out right beside me, and I can be opening my book as well, so I can flip pages with the video. Welcome and if something's CAS a little blurry and I have like, what does that say? College, the Dalzor, I've got it right here to look at. Oh, it says Word Project Tips and Tricks. Four. So that's a really nice thing to be able to do. Document cameras are a great invention. Why they go to the side beats me. That's not anything I do, and it's actually not anything I even see on my screen when I'm recording. So it's one of those cases, this is the best we can get, so this is what we're going to work with. And here's a way for you to help work around it, because now I'm looking at basically the same exact thing over here, except I'm in week three. 
three. But remember, um, you same can exact thing over here and look as you're things, looking at case you over here. Quite so it's a great result. way to use multitasking oh, no, while working between in the class. So you get your video. Which also, you're be if watching, you did buy the you e got student data files from downloads, you're going to need to versus do the that download regular thing again book. so that you, you have may them. want to open your ebook I would in one window put either on your and have your way going in the other so you can look back like for mine I can drag and drop um, it makes it a desktop, lot easier than trying to have them over as. the top and then clicking between because you're going which is to another way to get this there week. is by clicking so on the toolbar drug over also Along notice down here I now have two browsers showing. So if I put these over the top of each other, I actually can change here as well. So you need to make sure you have those available. You Remember, you cannot insert screen. any files. So those are nice things to know for being to able to multitask on a Windows machine. And let's look machine. at what you're going to be submitting. You're going to have your learning project. We'll walk through here in